they feel re-energized in Mongolia. So in my humble opinion, Mongolia is energetic Mongolia. So it's a very rich country. Mongolia is considered one of the ten richest countries in terms of variety and volume of mineral resources. It's quite easy to be a democracy in Western Europe where you're surrounded by like-minded, all right, some are liberals, some are right-wing, but, but they're all there. But you are a democracy surrounded by uh, a communist state and uh, Russia, which is, I mean, one wouldn't describe it as a functioning democracy uh, uh, at the moment. Is that difficult? Does that put Mongolia in a difficult position? So Mongolia's democracy is young and fragile. Uh, in 1992, we adopted our first democratic constitution and established uh, democratic institutions and parliament, elected parliaments. But, uh, of course, democracy can be fragile, influenced, impacted by the external and internal factors. So far, uh, for us, poverty, corruption, internal, our internal problems are uh, making our democracy more fragile. So, uh, Mongolia is geographically neutral country, so we don't interfere, don't uh, comment about uh, internal affairs of other states. Well, you've got an election coming up next year. Yes. Now, we saw mm. in the UK at the last election, we've seen in the US the disinformation, both internal and external. Do you worry that social media could be used next year for disinformation in your election campaign and that you need to guard against it? That's a very good question. So, uh, worldwide, the internet, social media, artificial intelligence, and uh, fourth industrial revolution positively and negatively impacting to the democracy, democratic institutions, and elections as well. So. Uh, we are very much worried about uh, this artificial intelligence, social media and external influence. So that is why we want to protect civil rights and in internet and social media. Right, but on this corruption question, you've had a particularly nasty scandal over coal recently. Do you think that the public can be confident that you've rooted it out, that the lessons have been learned. There'll always be some corruption, but that the, 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 the judicial and, led, and, and legal system has worked as it was intended. I trust to the people and democracy, strength of democracy. So transparency is the key for fighting corruption. And in order to consolidate our democracy, to fight co corruption, to ensure human rights, to strengthen our democratic institutions, we amended our constitution. We improved, expanded representativeness of the people. So it will create more transparency, more check and balance, and it will ensure and encourage real fight with corruption. So transparency, people will control. Why I'm talking about by the people and for the people. So uh, transparency will help us to fight with corruption in broader terms. Final question, sir. Mm. You know in Britain, in, in the Houses of Parliament, I'm sure you're familiar, uh, the Speaker always calls order. Order! <laughs> order! Mm. What's your equivalent when you want to get their attention? What do you say? Uh, usually I call all the members by uh, family, uh, family names. Yes to attract their attention, to show respect. In other words, also I call uh, distinguished members. So uh, and I try to, uh, and also I... Uh, they have the gavel. Have the gavel. <laughs> but, and what do you do if they get unruly? What do you do if they get out of hand? Do you kick them out? Uh, I can't kick them out. They are representatives of the people, so I just... Uh, uh, turn off the microphone. <laughs> <laughs>